From giant bloodborne bosses to cute traps, Lost Belt 3 sure seems to have a wide range of servants that can fit everyone's taste. Hello everyone, Soberoni of GNA Reviews here, with a servant spotlight for the latest addition to Caldia's prestigious pretty boy club, Prince Lan Ling Wong. We'll be examining his stats and skills, as well as going over pointers on how to utilize them effectively and an overall grade, comparing them to how he stacks up to the other 4 star servants. Now, onto Lan Ling's stats. Lan Ling has a max HP of 12,625 and a max attack of 9,112. For a 4 star Saber, Lan Ling has a very high HP stat, however his attack is well below average. Compared to the other 4 star servants overall, Lan Ling suffers from just an average attack stat, but his HP remains among the highest in his rarity. In addition to his attack and HP, Lan Ling also has an NP gain rate of 0.65% and a star rate of 10.2%. His decent NP gain rate and high hit counts on his arts cards do give him above average NP gain. Unfortunately though, his star generating is below average, mostly due to having only one quick card. Lan Ling's overall stats lean heavily in favor of defense, and NP gain at the expense of offense, which is the typical stat spread for support. Taking a look at his skills, his first skill is Beauty Concealing Mask Rank A. This grants himself invincibility for 2 attacks or 3 turns, and increases the party's attack for 3 turns between 10 and 20% depending on level. His second skill is Vigorous like the Breaking Bamboo Rank C. This charges an ally's NP gauge between 10 to 20%, and also increases their buff success rate for 1 turn between 20 and 40%, both depending on level. And finally, his last skill is Demonic Face Rank EX. This skill increases the party's arch card effectiveness for 3 turns between 10 and 20%, and it also has a 60% chance to increase the party's critical star generating and crit strength for 3 turns between 30 and 50% both depending on level. For his passives, Lan Ling has Magic Resistance Rank C, which increases his own debuff resist by 15%, and Riding Rank A, which increases his own quick card effectiveness by 10%. Moving on to his deck and Noble Phantasm, Lan Ling has an Arts Buster deck with Quick Arts Arts Buster Buster and an Arts Noble Phantasm. As for his card hits, his Quick card has 3 hits, his Arts card has 3 hits, his Buster hits twice, and his Extra Attack hits 5 times. His Noble Phantasm is March of the Prince of Lan Ling, and it reduces all enemies NP gauge by 1 and reduces their crit chance by 20% for 3 turns. In addition, it also grants the entire party damage cut between 500 and 1500 for 3 turns depending on level, and it also increases the party's attack for 3 turns between 30 and 50% depending on overcharge. When it comes to ascension materials, you'll be happy to know that Lan Ling doesn't require any new or exotic materials. For his ascensions, all he needs are 18 Heroes Proof, 7 Phoenix Plumes, 30 Fangs, and 4 Dragon Scales. Heroes Proof can be farmed at the Pirate Ship in Okeanos with a 58% drop rate. Phoenix Plumes have a 35% drop rate at the Town Hall in Salem. Fangs can be found at the Island of Wyverns in Okeanos where they have a 50% drop rate. And Dragon Scales are best farmed at Nipper in Babylonia with a 12% drop rate. For his skill leveling, Landling is going to require 11 Phoenix Plumes, 36 Heroes Proof, 48 Stingers, and 8 Scarabs per skill. Stingers can be farmed at the Field of Reeds in Babylonia with a 62% drop rate, and Scarabs have a 12% drop rate at the Great Temple in Camelot. Forget about Astolfo, where the heck is my Lan Ling Bean plushie? Merchandising opportunities aside though, Lan Ling is more than just a pretty face. He is also the latest addition to the Support Saber subclass alongside servants like Dayan and Nero Bride. And right off the bat, Lan Ling has pretty much the perfect stat distribution for a support. Very high HP and good NP gain, which means that he can stick around in longer fights and he can contribute more with his Noble Phantasm. Unfortunately though, his star generating isn't as good as some other supports and his attack is predictably subpar. But Lan Ling has enough tools in his skill set to make up for these weaknesses, most notably in his signature skill, Demonic Face. 
This skill buffs the party's arch card effectiveness by 20%, and it also has a 60% chance to give the party a substantial 50% buff to crit damage and star generating. This is a tremendously versatile skill that does a lot. Firstly, the arts buff has a high uptime, so it helps out with the team's overall NP gain and damage significantly. And it can even help enable NP spamming and NP looping in the right team comps. The star generating and crit buff are also both useful for drastically increasing your team's overall DPS and their crit consistency, as the buff is big enough to even make up for Landling's own lack of star generating and damage. And best of all, this skill's cooldown is shockingly low at only 5 turns, so you can have all of these buffs active on your entire party for most of the battle in any given quest. The only drawback to this skill is the chance based nature of activating the star generating and crit buffs. But thankfully, Landling has a solution to that in his second skill, Vigorous Like the Breaking Bamboo. This is a targetable skill that gives an ally a 20% boost to their NP charge, and increases their buff success rate by 40%. Yet another tremendously versatile skill, which you're going to hear me say a lot in the spotlight. Because it not only can be used to help your DPS servant get off a quick Noble Phantasm to farm with, but it can also be used on servants with a chance based skill like Imperial Privilege to guarantee that the skill lands. But even more importantly, it can be used on Landling himself to guarantee the effects of his demonic face skill and turn himself into a self-sustaining crit engine. This skill also has a short cooldown, so it can be used in sync with demonic face. And if all of that wasn't enough, Landling has one last skill, Beauty Concealing Mask. This is his main defensive skill as it grants him a two hit invincibility and it increases the party's attack by 20% for 3 turns. The charisma like attack boost is very good, especially since it stacks multiplicatively with demonic face, so it can really juice up your team's DPS. But the invincibility is the real star of the show because it gives Landling the best form of hard defense against enemy noble phantasms. When combined with his unnaturally high HP, Landling can make for quite the tank. All three of Landling's skills are phenomenal, but I recommend leveling up Demonic Face first, as that has the most immediate and consistent impact on the team, followed by the NP charge for the better charge rate and buff success rate, and finally Invincibility last since that's more situational. Landling's Noble Phantasm is an arts debuff that drains the NP gauge of all enemies by 1 and reduces their crit chance by 20%. Additionally, it boosts all allies' attack and applies damage cut for 3 turns. Despite not dealing any damage, this is arguably one of the best NPs around for a 4 star servant. An AoE Noble Phantasm Drain is invaluable for arts teams as it essentially buys the whole team an extra turn to survive and deal with cooldowns. Likewise, a 30% attack buff is not insignificant, especially when combined with Landling's other damage buffs. And because his NP gain is so good, Landling can keep this buff up consistently. The damage cut and crit down can also be strong in stall teams when paired with other defensive buffs. Versatility and consistency is the name of the game with Lan Ling. His wide range of buffs and debuffs basically makes him effective in every conceivable arts team. Are you going for an NP spam and damage team? While Landling has a low cooldown NP charge, an arts buff, and two separate attack buffs to massively buff your DPS. Are you going for an arts crit team? While Landling can give the whole party a large, high uptime buff to crit damage and star generating that's on par with what Waver and Chiron can do. And even if you want to go for a pure stall team, Landling has an AoE NP drain on a spammable Noble Phantasm, a damage cut, and a two hit invincibility. Simply put, Landling can be put into any kind of arts team and make it substantially better. His skill set synergizes with pretty much every other art servant, and his cooldowns are so low that his buffs can easily be abused in most arts teams. Now that isn't to say that Landling is the be all end all of supports, he does suffer from jack of all trades syndrome, in that for as well rounded as he is, he isn't a hyper support who can carry the whole team on his own. He works better as a piece 
to complement some other more specialized supports for what they may be lacking, or to help round out the team and make it more consistent. Landling is a team player, not the star of the show. Also, it should go without saying, but Landling is weak offensively. This isn't a Nero Bride situation where he can play both support and DPS. Landling is securely stuck in his support role. When it comes to team comps, it's honestly harder to think of teams that Landling doesn't fit in. As I mentioned earlier, his flexible buffs give him good synergy with just about every art servant. But that said, you should always pair Landling with other, more focused supports as his buff numbers on their own can be lacking. Servants like Tamamo, Hans, and Caster Gill make for perfect allies alongside Lan Ling. Tamamo can be useful for both stall teams and more offensive NP teams, as both her NP drain and Fox wedding skills work really well with Lan Ling. Hans and Caster Gill, on the other hand, can assist Lan Ling with crit teams since they provide very good star generating and crit buffs. For offensive options, Lan Ling works best when he supports supporting art servants that have high NP gain or high crit damage. Servants like Saberlot, Ryoma, and Kuro. Saberlot makes for a powerful DPS in crit teams with Lan Ling because Demonic Face complements his skill set perfectly. Ryoma and Kuro are also strong DPS options in more Noble Phantasm focused teams, where they can make excellent use of Lan Ling's high uptime arts buff and his NP charge to spam out their Noble Phantasms. Landling's Bondcraft Essence is my mask and my cup of poison alcohol. It increases the party's arch card effectiveness and NP gain by 10%. This is a very good craft essence to use on Landling because it helps the party's NP gain tremendously. I also recommend other good support craft essences like 2030, Demonic Bodhisattva, and His Rightful Place to help with generating stars consistently or to improve the attack buff on his Noble Phantasm. You can also use other NP gain craft essences like Magical Girl of Sapphire or Painting Summer. These are going to help you with spamming out your Noble Phantasm as much as possible so you can stack the buffs. I also recommend keeping an eye out for Annual General Meeting, which releases in late April of next year. It buffs Arch Card effectiveness and P gain, and it generates stars per turn, so Landling can use it for both NP spamming and crit support. For command codes, Mask of Concealed Beauty works very well on Lan Ling. It increases buff success rate by 20% for two turns, which makes it very useful for triggering Demonic Face without having to rely on your second skill. Overall, Lan Ling makes a case for being one of the best art supports around at any rarity. Sure, his attack may be low, and he isn't going to solo carry your entire team like Merlin, but that's largely irrelevant when you consider just how much he can do. His low cooldown art arts buff and NP charge can enable most art servants to consistently spam their noble phantasms. His demonic face skill can work as a crit engine for the whole team, providing massive buffs to crit damage and star generating. He has excellent utility for stalling and survivability, and he can seriously bolster a team's overall damage through his attack buffs. So, in what I'm sure is not much of a surprise, Landling gets an A plus from me. And I'm struggling to not make that an S because in my opinion, he's arguably the best 4 star support next to Mosh. You know it says a lot when one of the only negatives I can come up with about a servant is that he doesn't break the game. Also, he gets bonus points for having such an amazing summer outfit. And those are my thoughts on Lan Ling, or at least all the thoughts that I can express in a safe for work video. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you haven't already, please do check out the spotlight I have up for the 5 star servant appearing in this gacha, Shang Yu. Link both on screen right now and in the description down below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing if you really enjoyed the video. Join the party over at our Discord, chill with us on Twitch, and follow us on Twitter. And I'll see you all in the next Servant Spotlight. So, Baroni out. Later.